Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine, across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one-year-old, low mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them, or see them on our website, BobWeberAutomart.com, we could save you between five and ten thousand dollars on your next almost new car purchase. Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like. Welcome into another edition of Sports Junkies. Time for a little pack of talk. <laughs> the last time for a little pack of talk. I'm Steve Sparky, Pfeiffer from Sports Radio 1250 WS. We're not going to have any pre draft. Oh, maybe. Sports Junkies? Well, between now and then. It's you know what? Because we're, we're going to Indianapolis again this year for the pre draft. I don't know if I'm going. Oh, you are going. I don't know you if I'm going. You are so going. I don't know if I'm going. They're not going to hold the combine if you don't uh, show up. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going. He oh, is Gary Wilson of the Racine Journal Times. And uh, time now to talk about the Packers' loss to the San Francisco 49ers. You saved my life in Indy last year. Yes, I did. What am I going to do this year without yeah, you? Yeah, I don't know. Gary Ellerson's not going to save my life. <laughs> no, no. Gary Ellerson will be near you if you got that at the combine. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that loss last night uh, by the Green Bay Packers. Hell, they lost. Uh, I, I put that loss on the Packers' offense. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy, that's where the game was lost. Uh, the defense played well enough to win, if you would have said before the game. Look, the you know, Niners are going to score 20 points going into the last two minutes of the game. I say, oh, Packers should win. And that's how that should end up, and it didn't happen that way. Yeah, I mean, you can be critical about the defense, too, as well. I mean, they, you know, they, they miss, miss plays throughout the uh, course of the game. And I'll tell you what, we actually predicted something accurately for once on this show. Do you remember how we said last week that the X factor could be Vernon Davis? Yep. And if they kept him in check, they'd be okay. And, and for the most part, they did. The first half, I thought they did a really good job. But give Jim Harbaugh credit. He waited and waited to get the matchup he wanted with Vernon Davis yep. on A.J. Hawk. There is no way in heaven A.J. Hawk can stay with him. And, and if that ball is thrown even further out in front of him, it, it's an easy touchdown. I mean, it wasn't easy anyways, but yep. what, what, what a horrible mismatch. you know. And then on top of that, it's like if there is a reason for the Packers to fire Dom Capers, that's one of them. I mean, that, that situation should <coughs> have never, ever occurred where you have A.J. Hawk trying to guard one of the fastest tight ends in the NFL. Well, it's Ted Thompson's fault for having A.J. Hawk on the roster. That's true, too. I mean, I, you know, those two were drafted side by side. Vernon Davis was on the board, A.J. Hawk was on the board, and Ted drafted A.J. Hawk and not Vernon Davis that year. And Vernon Davis went, what, the next pick to the San Francisco right, exactly, 49ers. Exactly. So you can go back and, and debate that all you want. Now, you had a big interception by Tremont Williams. That really was a momentum changer to get the Packer momentum back. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Dom Capers, hey, look, that defense, those first two drives, he gets credit. They, 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 they went all the way down there, but they didn't break. They give up two field goals. And you're going, hey, I mean, this should be 14 nothing, And because yeah, it's absolutely. not, you're going, our offense can take advantage of this for sure. Um, and then you do get up, you know, 7-6 at one point. Uh, but, again, your offense just never really seemed to get going. Rodgers never got on track. I mean, he, he was supposedly, one of the, without a question, one of the top three or four players in the NFL. And he, it seemed like he was another player yesterday. I mean, and, and give credit to San Francisco. Uh, they, they got just a terrific team. I mean, you look at San Francisco offensively, they got an excellent line. They got an excellent receiving core. They got an excellent running game. They got an excellent quarterback. I mean, that, that, that's a terrific team. Yeah, and they got a very good defense uh, as well. Don't forget no, that. No, no doubt. Now, the other part about this is when you talk about Aaron Rodgers and how this whole thing played out, James Jones had a couple balls he probably should have caught. Mm -hmm. Not that they're the easiest balls in the world, but he should have caught both of those balls. So that kind of cost them a little bit on that side of the ball. The other thing that everybody's talking about, you know, the day after the game, when actually what had happened, Leroy Butler, I was watching him with Leroy. Let, no, let, let me guess. Randall Cobb. Yes. Randall Cobb. To me, that was the play of the game. The, the Roy, the Roy play. just said, what did he just do? Why are exactly. We getting, and Leroy's comment to me was, why are we getting so cute now? Exactly. And I told that, that, is, it, that is exactly what went through my mind. Yes. They're just moving the ball down the field. Eddie Lacy's a machine. You get down inside the 10, first and goal, and I'm thinking, okay, either you put the ball in Rodgers' hands or you just say, hey, it's man-on-man -man right now. Right. Who is the tougher team? And he comes out and tries to be cute. And, and, and I've always been a McCarthy guy. As am I. But he does things like this yes. all the time. Remember in, in past years where they would – Get down first and goal at the one or two yard line, and he'd come out five and, wide. He, he'd come in an empty backfield. Yep. And, 
It, it didn't make any sense at all. Now, yeah. having said that, yeah. I felt bad for Randall Cobb. Because Randall Cobb, after the game, is acting like he's the reason they lost. And he said, I should have broke that tackle. It's something oh, that I, I, I agree. He said he I, 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 I need to figure out in the offseason how I can get better at breaking tackles. I mean, it sounded like he thought he was the reason they lost. He never should have been in there in the position to begin not, with. Not at all. And he didn't have a prayer. He, no. I mean, he, he's such an undersized guy. Yes. Anyways, you know what I mean? And, and when you're down there, the 49ers are playing, what, eight in the box yep. probably, if not more? Yeah. You know? That's absolutely right. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, we shift over there. When Sam Shields went down early in that game, I thought they were screwed. Because now I'm, I'm looking at it going, okay, well, you have Tremont, but now who's on the other side? And there was nobody on the other side as Michael Crabtree had a day. Was that uh, House's uncle that was the field judge? I don't think so. He got away with hold after hold, including a, a pass that was in the end zone where he literally grabbed his yeah. shirt. The official was right there, number 50. You can look it up, whoever it was. Yeah. No call. It was just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. how, how do you blow a call like that in, in a major game? The, it's just incompetence. Oh, there's and, a lot of calls I can blow. Oh, I mean, see, that, 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 that's a touchdown. They, they took away a touchdown, you know, that for the 49ers. Well, it worked for the Packers. Absolutely. So, so we're you not like that. Okay. Yeah. You're not complaining. I, I'm want, not complaining I just want good officiating, and, and it's not happening. So once Shields goes down, you know that exposes it. And Kaepernick takes advantage and goes goes away of a uh, crab tree uh, throughout the course of that game. So you knew that was going to work. But again, you look at that defense without Clay Matthews, without Johnny Jolly. Then you start losing outside linebackers. Mm -hmm. Mike Neal goes down again with injury because he's always hurt. Then you lose Malumba for a short period of time. Who cares? He goes who, down. Who cares? Well, it, it, it's a bad defense. It was from the beginning. Sure. So you lose bad guys. It's still bad. I, th this is my. This is what I think. Yeah. And you may disagree with me. If I'm like McCarthy Shocking. this morning, I wake up, <laughs> yeah. and I kind of feel relieved that it's over. Huh. I totally disagree. Because totally, he, totally, totally every disagree. week, Gary, he's watching, and every week he loses three or four guys to injury. I understand And then the that, next dude. week, the coaching staff has to get together and go, so who's left at linebacker? We picked up this guy, Joe Brown, off the screen last night. We're going to play him and see what he can do. I mean, every week he goes through this. He's got to be going, I, thank God it's over. Somebody told me this the other day, and I don't know if it's factual, but he claims that the Dallas Cowboys went through 19 defense linemen this year and four middle linebackers. The Green Bay Packers aren't the only team that gets banged up. I mean, I'd like to see somebody. Yeah, no, no. I, that, I, I was shocked too, but I, I know they were banged up to that degree. I'm not sure. But the point is, all these teams are banged up at this point. I mean, 49ers had one of their defensive starters out, no, no, defensive no, no. back starters out. No, you're talking 15, 16 guys. And I swear to God, it feels like every year this Packer team goes through it. The, 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 only, the only impact player, I mean, Shields, House did okay. House actually acquitted himself fine. The only, the they are the most hurt team in the National Football League since 2010. And if I was in charge up in Green Bay, I'd fire everybody on that medical side of the ball, everybody. Strength and conditioning coach, trainer, they're all gone. And I know that trainer's been there for 100 years. Right. That's I right. don't care. Yeah. They're all gone. And I'm trying something new. And I'll go back to the Brewers. Back in the, what was it, the early 90s or whatever, right? Okay. John Adams. He was a trainer forever right. with the Brewers. Right. Right. And they couldn't keep guys healthy on that pitching staff no matter what they did. Every year we had injuries. And finally they said, enough is enough. We're done. And they fired John Adams. They bring in Roger Kaplinger and, and his crew, right? What yeah. happened? Almost but, instantaneously, they're one of the most healthiest teams in baseball. Now you can go, well, hey, just got lucky. And they've been lucky for all these years. Or he was doing something different than John Adams that actually worked. You yeah. can't get any worse with a new training but, staff and training coaching staff. You cannot get any worse health-wise if you bring in new people. I'm sorry. I just don't buy it. And I'm not saying they don't, they're not trying hard or yeah. they're not smart enough to do the job. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is it's time for change. This has been garbage since 2010. How, 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 how do you know it's the, the medical staff? How do you know it's not... McCarthy's uh, approach to training these guys. What do you mean? That's the strength and conditioning coaches. No, no, no. That's no. what I they mean, get paid I, I, for. I know how they practice and what they're they're asking. Gary, you can only have so many padded practices. I, I agree, but maybe so. Maybe it's softer now than it's ever been. We, we don't know what McCarthy does if he if he uh, runs his on. practice. How and, how would you judge a strength and conditioning coach and a training staff? How would you judge if they're doing a good job or not? I don't think it's fair. Do I don't you, think I don't think it's fair to blame everything on that. Hold on, I'm asking you a question. How do you grade them? How do you grade if they get a raise or they get fired? How does one get fired if you're a strength and conditioning coach? Because guys get hurt, it's their fault. You're not answering the question. Focus That's on the question. How would you judge 
If a strength and conditioning yeah, coach yeah, should be fired. Yeah, yeah, if they're in physically fit, if you get all your players in physically fit condition, simple. Okay, well, so what okay. happens there after on the field? You have no control hold, over. Hold on. So guys, with, guys with constant hamstring injuries, that's not on the strength and conditioning coach. That's not. Uh, possibly. Oh, uh, possibly. <laughs> okay. Look, guys, I'm sorry. All I'm saying is, it's the greatest job in the world if there's no way of ever getting fired. And when you have as many injuries as you do, that's not true, though. There is going to be a change. Now, look, like I said, you can't be any worse than you are right now. If we make a change and these guys get fired, so you're, you're blaming the the Packers' defensive deficiencies to injuries. No, I'm blaming where this roster is for the last three or four years. Well, I know, you, but, but that, the way Ted let, does let's us back in. It had right. nothing really to do yesterday. The only guy yes, that it did, the only you guy. had no Johnny Jolly in the defensive line, arguably oh, maybe, yeah, maybe your yeah, best yeah. run stuffer. Right. You had no Clay Matthews, your best pass rusher. I agree with Matthews. After that, and, and then you can even talk about Finley, okay? But those two guys, that's it. Go through them all. Casey Hayward, hamstring injury. You're good. Come on back. Whoops. Hamstring again. You've got my epic vision here. Look at other teams, like I said before. I bet you. Most hurt team since 2010. You uh, can give me whatever okay. example so you what? wanted. They had, they had three more guys hurt than the Bears did. No. Or the did. No. There's a big discrepancy. There's a bigger discrepancy than you realize if you go over the last three or four year time frame. Yeah, could be. I'm telling you. And I'm sorry. And I'm sure everybody wants to protect these guys. Oh, it's not their fault. Broken collarbone, that's not their fault. Look, guys, it's not their uh, fault. And I understand. I, I, no, I'm not saying the collarbone. Okay. okay. All I'm I, saying is. Friends, I, can, I can understand you, that. People want to defend them like they're related to them. No. Why? I if a general I'm manager gonna... doesn't draft well, you want him fired. If well, you know, if a defense so is Ted Thompson should be fired. If, well, that's we'll get to that in <laughs> another video. We 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 talk about Don Capers, right? If the defense is bad, at twenty nine against the run. People want Don Capers fired. Okay, but, let, let, but you okay. get rid of him and you good. go, eh, we're good. Keep the same guys in charge. Okay, your point is good. Do you fire Don Capers? No. Do you think he'll be fired? I don't fire anybody. Not on the coaching side. I fired the medical side. Okay, do you think Don Capers is going to be fired? I yes. say yes. I think he's going to be fired. Wow. But I don't think he should be fired. I think I he's, go I I think he's going to be a scapegoat. And he's I, not a scapegoat. And because of how bad the linebacker plays on this team, I agree. And because they've got a glut of defensive linemen, I think they're going to hire a guy that's going to go to a 4 3 defense. I, I, the, the last two years, the Packers have been one of the poorest tackling teams in the NFL. Mm -hmm. That's a reflection of your coach and your, your coaching staff. And... To me, it's like it's come to the point. I've tried to defend Capers ever since he's been there. I mean, they won a Super Bowl with Capers. So you can say, yeah, you want, you can win with them. But their tackling is abysmal. Everybody around the league knows that they talked about it on the year yesterday. That's coaching. Can I? And then we talked about the mismatch with Vernon Davis on A.J. Hawk. That should never, ever happen. I'm sorry. Any tight end on A.J. Hawk is a mismatch. Absolutely. So, 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 you should, so, so the defensive coordinator should never, ever – uh, put his players in that position. So who is going to do it? Who's going to do you it? You don't have anybody else to replace A.J. Hawk out there. No, oh, you put A.J. Hawk out there. Who are you going to put You adjust your schemes. You say, hey, a, a safety is going to had You had Bolden and you had Vernon Davis going up the field. You had the safety hedging both sides, figuring out who he was going to cover. He hedged more Bolden no, than no, Davis, no, he, and Kaepernick made a good throw. Yeah, yeah, no. He, That's what happened. That, that, this has happened. He had a safety over the this wasn't, You know what, I, I would tend to agree with you if this is the first time it happened. It happened several times. No, I'm not disagreeing with you that it doesn't happen. I'm just saying on that play and, and, and after it happened two or three times earlier in the season, they should have made some kind of an adjustment. For that play. Well, we're going to find out. I, and, again, I don't think he should be fired. I don't think it's on him. I don't think it's on his coaching staff. I think they do a heck of a job considering the general manager doesn't draft players that fit his scheme. And then he's going to take. Ah, there we go. He's got to take. I knew it was going to be he's got to, He's got to take Mike Neal, who's a defensive end, and figure out how to make him an outside linebacker. And now I find out that Dayton Jones, who also is a defensive lineman, they were running him in outside linebacker right, in practice right, this right. week. Oh, sure. That may end up happening next year. You cannot con Continue to force his coaching staff to make adjustments and try and take squares and put them in circles. It ain't going to work. It's just not. And then to say it's Capers' fault is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if he's a scapegoat and if they go to a 4-3 defense, then B.J. Rogers is well, back. He is or isn't? He is. If they stay with the 3-4, he's I, gone. I, I don't think B.J. Rogers is coming back. If they go to a 4-3, he's I, back. I, if they I go think, to a 3-4, he's gone. I think gone. he's been average at best I agree. last season. And, and, and I think but people that, argue that that he would be explosive in a 4-3. Hmm. Now, again, I, I doubt that. I, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. He, he's, that's the he's had one-on-one -on -one matchups all season, and he can't break. He, he can't win the battle. I, I've seen enough of B.J. Rogers to say he's an average player. Sam enough. Shields? 
What about him? You want him? Yeah, absolutely. Because that MRI, now we're going to find out about this knee. Absolutely. That's good. That could cost that, a lot that, of money. That's the one thing, I mean, that's becoming more and more uh, vital to the NFL. You better have good corners. I mean, it's imperative in today's passing game. Packers have two. Yeah, and, and that's a good start. Now they still have to address their, their safety situation. They need safeties. They need no linebackers. They need outside linebackers. <laughs> they need but two linemen. Uh, offensive lineman? No, defensive lineman. Defensive Well, they're defensive. Yeah, they're, they're, that's shady. Too. I'm not as worried about the defensive line. If they go to a 4 3, then Neil and Perry, if you bring Neil back, he's a free agent, too. Neil and Perry could be your ends. Yeah, you know, it's amazing, too, how things change. A year ago this time, we were talking about the offensive line, how suspect it was, yep. right? Bakhtiari. I, I really think it's one of their strengths now. now. Again, Bakhtiari got his butt kicked yesterday. I mean, against against what, what, kick. Against Alden what, Smith. No, I agree with you. Oh, he, but he, he did. This he, is the second time Alden Smith saw him, yeah. and he took advantage of the second time. Now, Mr. Bakhtiari, okay, that great mm. medical staff of yours, tells him, hey, <sighs> you've got a concussion, right? You can't go anywhere. Yeah. This is the story. This is how it goes. I wasn't obviously there, but this is what they say. You can't go back in, right? I'm going back in. <laughs> Whatever, down the way. Goes back in. They run a play to the left. Bakhtiari, boop, 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 boop. It was that now he goes, and, and then it's like, what's he doing back out of the field? Go take him back up, walk him back over, and it's done. He never should have been out there. He put himself in jeopardy of really getting himself hurt. That may have been Pam Oliver's finest hour as a journalist. How do you not stop that, 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 that guy from getting out on the field? That, that was a great, great uh, observation she made, though, that he, get, he went out there. Otherwise, I don't think anybody would have known No, that. she yeah. did. No, yeah. you're absolutely right. Pam Oliver does so, that. So, as they say, a squirrel, a blind squirrel finds an acorn. Wants but anyways. One last thing before we wrap up. One last thing. Sure. I've heard that before. Do you realize, outside of the Super Bowl year, yeah. Rodgers has never won a playoff game? Outside of the Super Bowl year, Wait a he second. has not won. A, they've been one and done in every other year. Against Minnesota? Every other year they've been in the playoffs, they've been one and done. He lost to the Giants. He lost to the Niners. He lost to the Cardinals. Wait a, sec. Wait a sec. Didn't they play the Vikings in the first round last year and won? Yeah. Did they? Yeah. So they yeah. weren't one and done last Come year. Come on. Oh, I thought <laughs> I had it. <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to ruin your day. But, okay, so but your point is valid. Your point is valid. They are they are they are going one and done. Giants beat them. Niners beat them. Cardinals beat them. Yeah, you, beat you, them you, know, you know what was? I mean, from a fan's perspective, what was really disappointment disappointing to me after the game yesterday? The reaction of the Packers. Cobb, you said, was very very upset, right? Yes. But did you see how the other guys reacted? It's like, yeah, we played a good game. Let's you know so. I guarantee a couple years ago, those guys would have been livid that they lost. They, they had a whole change in demeanor about this. And maybe it's because they had such a long struggle all season. They were uh, ravaged by injuries. I, I can understand that. But nevertheless, it, it just seemed like the whole attitude was somewhat different than... If you want to talk about attitudes and winning and losing... You want to tune in for the Bucks video. That's coming up. <laughs> it is the Sports Junkies. He is Gary Wolfel of the AC Journal Times. Steve Sparky Pfeiffer of the Wendy's Big Show. Enjoy the rest of your Packer offseason, and uh, we'll see you later right we'll, here. We'll talk more about the Packers. At Racine Sports Zone. And, yes, you are going to the draft combine. Dot com.